Right, today we're going to be looking into causes of the revolution. So this is lesson 2.1, unit 2, lesson 1. All right, so don't we remember this? This is from page 1, well, t page 2 in your notes. Um, so we talked about the British colonies and the French and the Spanish all settling in North America. And again, these people are very competitive. Look at how close they are together. What's this going to cause? They're very competitive, remember. It's going to cause war. So the French and Indian War happens. And all you really need to know about the French and Indian War are the effects of the war. So the first effect is the Proclamation Line of 1763. And it basically said that the British could not move past the Appalachian Mountains. It put in a clear border so that way French and British settlement settlers did not intermingle and did not cause problems. So here's a picture of that line. And what I want you to do right now, go ahead and go to page one of your notes, which is your physical map. And on the Appalachian Mountains, go ahead and write in um, the proclamation line because that was a clear border for colonists. And remember, wars are expensive, so who's going to pay for them? I mean, very expensive. Who's going to pay for them? It's going to cause a lot of debt for the British government. The parliament, which is the British government, decided that American colonists should pay for the war because they're the ones that started it by settling too far. And the colonists are sitting here going, what money? We make the littlest amount of money out of everybody because of mercantilism. So they're going to raise taxes. <clears throat> Again, mercantilism was the policy that prevented colonists from trading with other countries. It made the British rich while the colonists weren't making as much because they could be trading with other countries making more. So now they're not only making less money, they're having to pay more money in their taxes to pay for the war. <clears throat> now, go ahead and catch up on your notes. The French and Indian War, Navigation Acts, Proclamation Act, the Stamp Act. I'll go back and pause this for you. And a star question? Another star question? All right, so the Stamp Act is going to be the first tax, and it's a tax on printed paper. What they would have to do is they would literally stamp this paper, and if that paper was stamped, uh, it was a legal piece of paper, according to the British government. And they had to pay for that stamp. Well, this Stamp Act caused the Americans to create the Stamp Act Congress. It's where they got together. It's the first meeting between multiple colonies. Um, and they drafted a protest, and they decided to begin boycotting. Now, boycotting is where you decide not to purchase anything um, related to whatever they're protesting. So they're protesting the Stamp Act, so they're deciding not to protest paper. In the Stamp Act Congress, they claim taxation without representation, which becomes the outcry of the revolution, of the American Revolution, because the British Parliament is a legislative body. It had representatives that were voting on laws and they were passing these taxes without a representative from the colonies. So no one was speaking up for them for their rights. <clears throat> Start question. Boston Massacre. The colonists were protesting more tariffs or taxes that were placed by the British Parliament when the soldiers decided to show up to contain the protest. Now, some reports say that it was snowballs that the colonists were throwing. Some reports say that the colonists were throwing sticks and stones. Obviously, if you're a loyalist and you side with the British soldiers, you're going to say it was sticks and stones because it was terrible. If you're for the American colonists, you're going to say it was just snowballs. We were just having fun. And then these soldiers decided to kill us, um, which is exactly what happened. They killed five soldiers. And Crispus Attucks was an escaped slave, and he becomes the first death of the American Revolution because he was at this protest. So the Boston Tea Party happens not long after. The Brit British government passed another tax on tea. Uh, the Sons of Liberty was led by Samuel Adams. They decided to protest this by dumping the tea into the Boston Harbor called the Boston Tea Party. They dressed up like Native Americans so that way they were disguised. They had war, um, war markings on their face and in and, and their hair so they were, they were thoroughly disguised. It didn't end up working though. 
This is called civil disobedience. It's protesting in a peaceful manner. This is an example of civil disobedience if the star asks you. Uh, the real definition, it is not really civil disobedience because this is not peaceful. Um, they literally attacked a ship, but the star says it is, so I guess it is peaceful protest. The intolerable acts, which are really called the coercive acts, but the Americans called it intolerable, were a direct result of the Boston Tea Party. It increased military presence, th including a quartering act, which allowed military men to live in colonists' homes. Like, could you imagine someone just barging in, sitting on your couch, and that guy's a soldier that's in charge of making sure you're not rebelling? Like, that'd be pretty terrible. All right, so the first Continental Congress happens as a direct result of the Intolerable Acts. Twelve of the 13 colonies got together to discuss their problems with Great Britain. And the first battle of the Revolution happens not long after. Um, this is going to be Lexington and Concord. Gage was in charge of Massachusetts. After the Tea Party, they put another guy in to make sure that uh, the colonists were behaving. He sent 500, 500 soldiers to arrest two people. John Hancock and Samuel Adams, who were leaders of the Sons of Liberty in Lexington, and they were supposed to pick up illegal weapons in Concord. Paul Revere rode in to warn that the British were coming, the British are coming. That's the, that's the story we go with, but that really doesn't make sense because Paul Revere was also British. He was just talking about himself if he were to say the British were coming. So really he said the Redcoats because the British wore Redcoats, the British soldiers wore Redcoats. So he said the Redcoats are coming. The British soldiers were stopped by 70 Minutemen, 500 soldiers and 70 Minutemen, which was a militia. They did not find any guns or Hancock or Adams. So they stopped that. On the soldiers' way back to Boston, the Minutemen fired at them. The colonists used their knowledge of geography. They cut them off around another uh, little hill. There was some bush that would, bushes that would caused some coverage and that's how they attacked them. This battle is known as the Lexington as the Battle of Lexington and Concord. If you're in Lexi the city of Lexington, it's known as the Battle of Lexington. <laughs> if you're in the city of Concord, it's known as the city the Battle of Concord. Uh, they're very competitive about this name. But it was known as the shot heard around the world because it's the first time any colony rebelled against its European mother country and it led to a bunch of other countries deciding to rebel. The Battle of Bunker Hill, this is an interesting one. It occurred outside of Boston. The British were trying to charge up the hill, so they charged up once, and the Americans held, held them back because they were on top of the hill looking down. The Americans held them back, shot at them. So the, the British retreated. They tried again, the Americans shot them down, and they retreated. And then on the third time, the Americans were running out of bullets, and so the American commander announced, do not fire until they are so close to where you can see the whites of their eyeballs. I mean, you have to be pretty close to see the whites of somebody's eyeballs in order to shoot them, so that must have been scary. It ended in a um, continental loss, so an American loss, the British won. So on the margins of these causes that we've talked about already, go ahead and rate each event based on how angry you think the colonists were. So one is annoyed, six is like starting to get a little bit like, oh my gosh, can you believe that that's happening? Uh, and then 10 is full on rebelling violently, like killing people violent. <clears throat> this will help you later. Advantages. So the British had most of the advantages. They had a big army, they were better trained, and they were um, better financed. <clears throat> the Americans, or the Continental Army, had no training, and but they had better use of geography. They knew the geography just like the Battle of Lexington and Concord. They used that well. They used the geography, they hid in the trees, they ambushed certain hills so that way the British couldn't see them. They were very, very good about doing this. Some important people. The colonists opposed to the revolution were called loyalists. They were loyal to the king. Colonists that were for the revolution were called patriots. Some people were opposed to the revolution. Um, so Patrick Henry decided to give a speech at the House of Burgesses in Virginia 
and he said, give me liberty or give me death. Like he would rather die fighting for his freedom than live any longer with this tyranny that was happening. <clears throat> Haim Solomon is a patriot businessman known for financing the whole, pretty much the whole revolution. I mean, he paid for it. And King George III was the king of England during the American Revolution. He was kind of crazy. The First Continental Congress, just to review, because we're going to talk about the Second Continental Congress here in just a second. The first was a direct, uh, of di direct result of the British passing the Intolerable Acts. Twelve out of thirteen colonies got together. They met in Philadelphia. Remember, I said Philadelphia would be important to our country's history. John Adams was an important lawyer for Massachusetts who acted as a leader during this meeting. They created militias, which they kind of already had, but they said, you know, if you don't have militias, you need to get them. These are untrained, unled men. I like to call them yee-yee boys. They're the boys that have guns, they know how to use them, kind of, and they're just, they're mad, so they're saying yee-yee-yee, like, until they, they get their independence. They did not want to separate from Great Britain. At this, Britain, at this point, they just wanted to try to work things out. They were fighting. Um, they did not want a divorce. They just wanted to work it out. The Second Continental Congress comes around, and things change. 13 out of 13 colonies sent representatives to meet in Philadelphia. This is again led by John Adams. They decided that they were going to gain independence from Great Britain. This is enough is enough. Thomas Jefferson was from Virginia. He drafted the uh, Declaration of Independence with John Adams. It listed the colonists' grievances or problems that they had with the British government and it was based on the ideas of John Locke. So life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, these are unalienable rights. They are natural human rights that you are born with. You are born with these rights and they should not be infringed upon you. Uh, one of the grievances was taxation without representation. John Locke was the first, John Hancock, excuse me, was the first to sign the declaration. He wrote his name real big, real bold, right in the middle. Whenever you read the declaration, the pretty much the only uh, name you can pick out was John Hancock. Uh, it was signed on July 4th, 1776. This is an important date. And they set up the Continental Army, placed George Washington as the commander, then the Navy, which was controlled by John Paul Jones. Remember, the lady was a speech written by Abigail Adams, John Adams' wife. The state of Texas wants me to tell you that this was the first feminist idea. You need to remember the ladies. You need to remember their rights when you're writing uh, our government documents. You need to remember it's not, not what it really was. Um, Abigail Anna Adams was a very fundamentalist. She did not believe that women had rights. She was just saying, remember to protect the ladies. Remember that you are men and your job is to protect us. Uh, she was not saying that we needed rights, but if it comes up on the star, it's going to say that, remember the ladies, was a feminist movement. <clears throat> ben Franklin agreed to serve as an ambassador to France, trying to get aid for the American Revolution. So again, the colonies are poor. France is very, France is very rich. Uh, they're going to try to get some money and some help. I would highlight the Declaration of Independence in your notes so you can find it quick. Uh, it's a very important document. And we survived this next.